जो इंसान नहीं आंख देख सकती है वो कैमरा नहीं रिकॉर्ड कर सकता हाँ With a group of research divers who've been exploring the underwater caverns and conduits connected to Wakulla Springs for 25 years, they have mapped 37 miles of underwater caverns and conduits connected to the spring. It's the most extensively mapped underwater cave system in the world. That group is called the Woodville Karst Plain Project, which is a big mouthful. Uh, if you'd like to see videotape, mm. video recording of what that underwater world looks like, you can visit their website and you don't need to remember Woodville Cars Plane Project, just remember WKPT. So if you Google WKPT. I did take uh, three boat tours on Thursday. We saw six manatee on Thursday. Uh, so they are no doubt around, and there's one right next to the boat on the left. That nice. About uh, 15 feet over to the left, there's one behind us. Oh, here. Yeah. So we're going to back up here and uh, spend a moment or two. And larvae, insect larvae, worms, and crayfish. On the left, again, back here at about a 7 o'clock position, you see a bird with its wings spread out. Uh, that's a anhinga. Anhinga, that's a uh, tropical and semi-tropical bird. We are near the northern edge of its range in uh, North America here. And uh, we'll be seeing more of those. I'll tell you more about them when we're at a better look at one up close. You may also see some little dark birds out there, black with some white on their tails and a bright red bill with a yellow tip. Those are called common gallinule. And uh, we'll see more of those. Here's a pied bill grebe on your left up close in the water back here now by me. Little brown bird called pied bill because the bill is two colors, gray with a black ring around it. Their favorite food is crayfish. And it's easy to tell when they've got one because our crayfish here are orange, a nice bright orange color. They eat those crayfish alive and wiggling. And uh, to uh, deal with all those hard crayfish parts in their bellies, they also eat their own feathers. At any point in time, a pie-filled green belly could be a quarter to a half full of feathers. Those hard crayfish parts get tangled up in the feathers and make pellets that they cough back up just like a hawk. I don't really know why the heck cypress trees have knees. They, uh, they used to think they were some kind of breathing device to get oxygen down to the roots because they grow in soggy places where the water saturates the soil. But if you take a saw and cut through a cypress seed, you will find that it is solid wood, just like the tree trunk. Well, one explanation is that it's just part of a support structure to keep the tree from tipping over since they do grow in soggy soils. And that makes some sense, but it doesn't really explain why they would grow up in the air like this. Spanish beard. But the uh, Spaniards like that. They started calling it Cabello Frances, French hair dude. That didn't stick, obviously. And uh, somewhere along the way, Spanish beard became Spanish moss. We got a pretty good sized alligator over here to the left. I believe we saw it going the other way. To the right of that lone cypress tree, heading uh, the same direction that we're going. Up river there. We've seen before. If you look at its head, you'll see it has a very long, slender yellow bill. Uh, oh, up the river. Zada bare. Another ibis on the right bank here, up close. A couple of them there. Vorai kage. 
Florida. Feeling around for something that wiggles another alligator out in the center between those two islands, also facing up river. The bird in the foreground there is one of those common gallinule with a bright red bill. Yellow tip. Does the alligator eat the bird? The alligator eats everything. From snails up to deer with an occasional person when given the opportunity. <laughs> Swanee cooter, yes, cooter. The word cooter comes from an African word uh, that means turtle. On both sides. And uh, this is one of the better places on the river for seeing snakes. Oh. Somebody got a good grip on the young man with the red hat who's standing on the seat there? You do. All right, thanks. So uh, our most common snake here is the uh, brown water snake. It's moccasins or cottonmouths on the species list, but uh, I have not seen one uh, on the river. I'm sure they're there, but uh, they're pretty secretive. There was a snake coiled up on the transom of one of the boats out of the boat dock a while back on a day I wasn't here, and uh, I was told by one of the rangers they thought it was probably a water moccasin. <laughs> I asked him if it had vertical pupils or horizontal pupils. He told me nobody got close enough to find out. On Thursday, one of our research scientists who comes down here on, to do uh, water quality sampling took a picture of a diamond, eastern diamondback rattlesnake on the grass right up the water, just barely showing. I really do need you to sit down now, please. Ma'am, thank you. Uh, about the trickiest piece of navigation we got here. I got cypress knees on the right and the stump on the right. Left. Nope, the other way around. Anyways, this used to be a beautiful uh, arching palm tree that came up over the water. We called it Tarzan's tree because in the mid-1940s, MGM Studios filmed two Tarzan movies here. That was back when Johnny Weissmuller played the part of Tarzan. But just like Johnny, the tree has passed away. But its cousin... Right up here on the bank, we've got a big, healthy, happy cabbage palm or staple palm tree. That's our state tree in Florida. Straight ahead, you'll see a tree lying in the water across the mouth of a slough, a little arm of water that extends up into the swamp. We call this slough the lair of the creature from the Black Lagoon. There were three Creature from the Black Lagoon movies filmed in the 1950s. The original, which was called The Creature from the Black Lagoon, they filmed here at Wakulla, up on the main river channel and up in the spring. The sequel they creatively titled The Return of the Creature from the Black Lagoon, but it wasn't really accurately titled because they didn't film it here. They filmed that at some down the right there, where Mr. McGlynn saw the uh, diamondback rattlesnake on Thursday. So uh, Joe Jr. Uh, Pretty much hangs out up here back in the uh, spring in May on this uh, morning boat ride. Uh, they're going to be mainly on your right uh, and probably mostly in the water. So look down the water here. Maybe up. Oh, there's a yellow crown night here. Thank you. Right up here on the bank next to me. I'm going to back the boat up so you get a chance to look at it. It's back behind this. Uh, back behind this uh, dark green wax myrtle standing there on the bank. That's yeah. our adult yeah. yellow crown night here. Yeah. And we'll go back here. Be careful I don't run into the ground. All right, we'll go back by nice and slowly here, give you another chance to see the yellow crown night here. Up really close, you'll see it has red eyes. Uh, there's probably a good reason. It's an so a couple of things to call to your attention on the alligator. First of all, notice how long the legs are as we go back by it. Very conveniently has them sticking straight out from the side. The little blue heron that just came in and landed in the marsh on the right. But also notice the ridges on the alligator's back, those little pointy things. I'm going to tell you a little bit about those in a minute. All right, we'll go by very slowly here so you get
get a good look. This may be your best alligator look for the day. Yeah. So uh, that could be a male or a female. Um, based on size, the females top out at about six or seven feet. And that one's pretty close to six, I would guess. Uh, over, over seven feet, we can be certain for the most part that it's a male. They get to be as much as...